Welcome friends. In this third part uh, of uh, the series of videos which we are uh, in which we are covering the first chapter of the Hornbill textbook that is the portrait of a lady by Kushwan Singh. We are going to look at uh, some of the difficult words and phrases that have been used in this uh, chapter and we will try to understand their meanings and we will try to see how these words are used. So let's take a look. As you are aware, if you have gone through the first two uh, parts of this uh, series, you will understand that uh, the chapter talks about the author's grandmother. It is a picture or a portrait that the author has tried to create with words and he describes how his grandmother was a very religious lady, how his relationship with her progressed from being a very good or rather not progressed, uh, moved from being a very good friendship when they were together in the village to, uh, up to a relationship where uh, they did not interact much when they moved to the city. So, uh, in this chapter, uh, I think the first important thing uh, or, or some of the difficult words uh, to understand are uh, revolting, R-E-V-O-L-T-I-N-G. The author describes that the thought that his grandmother would have been young and pretty at some point of time was revolting for him. What is revolting? Uh, obviously the word uh, comes from the basic word revolt. A revolt is uh, an opposition or some kind of uh, an armed response uh, against the order of the day or against the government of the day. So for example, we talk about the revolt of 1857 where uh, the soldiers of the then uh, British uh, India mutinied or revolted against uh, the British uh, rule uh, that was uh, going on that during that time. So a revolt is uh, an armed opposition or some kind of a rising against the government of the day and a revolting thought is something something which is a disturbing thought, a thought that does not uh, go well with your um, thought process or it, it uh, disturbs you or it uh, creates uh, some kind of a disturbance within your mind. So the revolting thought in this case was uh, the fact that his grandmother could have been young and pretty at some point of time. Then the second uh, word or, or the second phrase that I would uh, like to bring to your attention is uh, an expanse of white serenity. The grandmother who is moving around in her spotless white clothes uh, also, she has silvery white hair, uh, locks of hair uh, falling across her face. Uh, she is described as an expanse of white serenity. Uh, what is an expanse? An expanse is, an, is a large area or a large uh, land mass or, or some area that is spread out over uh, the field of vision. For example, the expanse of the blue sky. The sky is spread out over a large uh, part of our vision if you look out at the sky and therefore the sky can be described as an expanse which means a very wide or a large area. An expanse of the sea or you can talk about uh, an expanse of field which means a very large field that is um, uh, very wide and very long and uh, it covers most part of our, our vision or what we can see. So an expanse of white serenity. What is serenity? Uh, it comes from the word serene. Serene means calm and peaceful and serenity uh, is derived from that. So uh, serenity means a feeling of quiet or a feeling of peace or calmness. The state of being uh, serene or the state of being peaceful or calm is described as serenity. So grandmother has been described as uh, something uh, who was very calm, very peaceful and she looked like a vast expanse of uh, 
uh, serenity white white because uh, she was wearing white clothes and, and her hair was white as well so she is described as an expanse of white serenity like a himalayan landscape or the landscape of the hills where there could be snow capped peaks and glaciers and these would be as white as grandmother was and as peaceful as well uh, another uh, phrase that has been used and, and quite importantly is a turning point uh, a turning point is uh, some juncture or or a point in the story where the narrative changes direction so if it was going in a certain direction and then there is a sudden change in the direction then we call that as a turning point because as if somebody has taken a turn turn towards the right or turn towards the left or maybe even a u turn which means they are just going in the opposite they start going in the opposite direction so a turning point that has been mentioned in the story and there's also a question on that in the text is the time where they moved the the author and his grandmother they moved from their village to the city and that has been described as a turning point because the relationship really changed direction after that point because before that when they were in the village they were the best of friends they spent a lot of time together but after the author and his grandmother moved to the city they started spending less and less time together and also their friendship or their relationship sort of uh, went downhill which means that their friendship started uh, deteriorating uh, it, it started uh, becoming less and less of a friendship and it was more of a more of an acquaintance so that is what is described as a turning point a place or a point of time in the narrative when things change direction when the story changes direction that is a turning point another phrase uh, that is important in this lesson is that grandmother accepted her seclusion with resignation now there are two words here seclusion s e c l u s i o n and resignation now you might be uh, familiar with resignation you know that when you are uh, giving up a post or or you are stepping down from a certain uh, job or a post then you resign which means that you write a letter uh, uh, explaining uh, your reasons for not being able to continue or giving up on a certain responsibility that is where you resign or you give your resignation similarly here as well uh, grandmother has accepted her seclusion with resignation seclusion uh, comes from the word seclude which means that to keep something isolated keep something or someone away from others so if you are secluding somebody it means that you are keeping them away from others or keeping that particular thing or person in isolation akelapan seclusion means akelapan and resignation means that you are basically giving up without uh any complaints or or accepting your situation that that is what it is i cannot do anything so i am accepting my situation with resignation which means that i have given up so grandmother accepted her seclusion she made a peace with her seclusion without complaining or without uh really uh making uh an effort to oppose it and that's where uh the seclusion with resignation fact comes up then uh, there is another uh, phrase or or rather a bunch of words uh, where uh, uh, to which i would like to draw your attention that is a veritable bedlam of uh, chirrupings now this phrase comes in uh, in uh, um uh, where my grandmother is uh, feeding the sparrows you know after after the author has started going to the university uh, the grandmother starts spending time more and more time with the sparrows she feeds them for half an hour every day she uh, breaks up the bread uh, into small crumbs and and she feeds the sparrows and there would be hundreds of birds who would come to her they would sit on her shoulders they would sit on her head and uh, they would eat out of her hand so at that time and you can imagine that if uh, uh, hundreds if hundreds of birds gather at a place that place can 
never be quiet it will definitely be a lot of noise and that's what a bedlam is a bedlam is a large amount of noise some kind of confusion for example if there is a very big market or a very big fair uh, going on then there will be many people and that kind of an atmosphere that kind of an ambience can be described as a bedlam a bedlam is a loud noise causing confusion for example uh, we can also have another word pandemonium a pandemonium is also a loud noise or a or a very uh, a big uh, noisy place or a, or a noisy situation where there is a lot of confusion so pandemonium bedlam they mean noise causing confusion and then and, and the chirpings of the birds are definitely uh, going to be noisy veritable now that that is another word which has been used here veritable typically means something that is known to be true or what is true so veritable bedlam means something that was definitely a bedlam truly a bedlam and it was as such a bedlam or a loud noise so veritable means you can you can assume that it means true or something that is really so uh frivolous rebukes frivolous f r i v o l o u s frivolous frivolous means something that is not serious something that has been done in a careless manner something that has been done jokingly frivolous so something that lacks seriousness rebuke r e b u k e rebuke rebuke means to scold somebody to rebuke means to scold somebody or uh, to reprimand somebody which means that kisi ko daantna zor se daantna gusse mein daantna that is a rebuke or a reprimand so to scold somebody so frivolous rebukes this this word has been, these two words have been used uh, where uh, after the author comes back from uh, abroad uh, grandmother is especially happy and she feeds the birds longer that particular day she feeds them longer and she dismisses them with frivolous rebukes which means she shoes them away but not seriously not not uh, shoes them away seriously but with a bit of uh, fun or uh, with with actions that actually lack seriousness so she tries to shoo them away she tries to scold them uh, but uh, the scolding is not serious uh after that then you know what happens in the evening she collects the women from the neighborhood and and starts singing she gets a gets uh, an old drum uh and that drum has been described as having sagging skins and it is described as a dilapidated drum now what is sagging to sag means to become loose and to hang so you know that a drum has uh, two sides uh, and and they are basically uh, pieces of leather which have been tightly uh, uh, tightly uh, attached to a ring and uh, the tighter the skins are the better the sound of the drum is or you have to adjust the tightness on the rings so that the drum makes the sound to the pitch and to the tune that you want it to but this particular drum has sagging skins which means the skin is loose it has been uh, hanging loose in the middle it is not very tight because it is an old drum so maybe the skins are hanging loose so that's why it has been described as sagging skins she she grandmother beat the sagging skins of the dilapidated drum now what is dilapidated you must have uh, understood by now that a drum is quite old so dilapidated d i l a p i d a t e d dilapidated means something that is very old or in in a very poor state uh in a poor condition and uh, it can be used to describe a building for example jarjar hindi mein hum jisko jarjar bol sakte hain ki jiski condition bahut kharab hai aisi building ya aisa drum that can be said to be a dilapidated drum which is a very old something in poor condition some uh something that is not uh, in the proper condition that is dilapidated uh some other words which i uh think uh, would be useful for students to understand in this chapter are wrinkled uh, w r i n k l e d wrinkled the w is silent so we don't say uh, we don't uh, say the sound of w aloud we say wrinkled wrinkle 
होना मतलब झुर्रियां जैसे चेहरे पे आ, कोई बूढ़ा व्यक्ति होता है उसके चेहरे पे काफी झुर्रियां आ जाती है जैसे ग्रैंड मदर वॉज वॉज क्वाइट ओल्ड एंड शी हैड रिंकल्स ऑन हर फेस हर फेस वॉज रिंकल्ड रिंकल्स कैन ऑल्सो बी ऑन अ शर्ट और अ पीस ऑफ क्लोदिंग फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ समथिंग हैज बीन वॉश्ड एंड रंग Uh, to remove the water, then there will be a lot of wrinkles on uh, that piece of cloth. And uh, to remove wrinkles, then we have to iron it. Uh, so, uh, wrinkle can be uh, about a cloth having a lot of folds or having a lot of, uh, um, you can say, or or it can be about a face that has a uh, lot of wrinkles. So it can describe a face as well as a cloth. but here in this chapter the word wrinkled is used to describe uh, grandmother's face mantelpiece uh, if you if you remember the text uh, you will remember that grandfather's portrait where he is described as somebody having a long flowing white bed uh, grandfather's portrait hung above the mantelpiece now what is a mantelpiece a mantelpiece is a a a, a small हॉरिजोंटल प्लेस और अदर अ वुडन सॉर्ट ऑफ फ्रेम दैट हैंग्स अबाउ अ फायर प्लेस फॉर एग्जाम्पल शेल्फ यू नो इट्स इट्स अल्फ अ वुडन शेल्फ विच इज टिपिकली प्लेस्ड अबाउ अ फायर प्लेस यू नो अ फायर प्लेस इज लाइक अ रेक्टेंगुलर ओपनिंग इफ यू हैव और अ स्क्वेयर ओपनिंग इफ यू हैव सीन अ फायर प्लेस एंड देर इज अ फ्रेम सराउंडिंग द फायर प्लेस एंड ऑन टॉप ऑफ दैट फ्रेम टिपिकली देर इज अ small shelf to keep things on top of that particular fireplace there is a shelf to keep things and that is called as a mantelpiece and the, uh, typically you can uh, put small trinkets or or small show pieces on the uh, mantelpiece and you can also have a huge portrait that can be hung over the mantelpiece uh the first word itself portrait of a lady what is a portrait a portrait is a picture or a drawing or a photograph of a person so so when a person has been depicted in a photograph or a or or, or a drawing uh, or a painting then that kind of a painting or drawing is called as a portrait and uh, as against that uh, there is a landscape now a landscape is a type of painting which typically uh, depicts the scene of a countryside you know that scene of natural beauty maybe uh, meadows or rivers flowing or mountains these are the type of things that are typically depicted in a landscape which is a type of a painting again and landscapes would be uh, arranged in a manner in which the longer part is horizontal the longer dimension is horizontal whereas the vertical dimension will be shorter so uh, if i have to show you a piece of paper uh, or or maybe this book this would probably be the landscape mode this will be the landscape mode this will be the portrait mode so if you want to draw a portrait you will keep the longer side vertical and the shorter side horizontal so the portrait will be like this whereas if you want to draw a landscape or you want to take a picture of a landscape or photograph of a landscape then the longer side would be horizontal uh a, a few other words i think i have covered a lot of words uh, i think most of the difficult words have been covered uh one of the words that has been used uh, early on in the chapter is hobbled grandmother hobbled across the house to hobble means to walk in a funny manner or to walk with difficulty for example imagine that you have a sprain in your ankle or you have some uh, injury to your foot then you would be hobbling you would not be walking in uh, in a straight manner or in the regular fashion you would be hobbling you will find it difficult to walk and therefore the way in which you walk would be hobbling so uh imagine that you have a sprain or or uh, uh, some injury in the foot in one of your feet and uh, the way you will walk that is called as hobbling grandmother being so old uh, she must have uh, some problem with her foot and therefore she hobbled and therefore uh, she is described as hobbling across the house with one arm uh, one hand on her waist to balance her stoop uh, stooping which means she is bent and 
therefore to balance her uh, posture she has to keep one uh, hand on her waist uh, there is also another word called puckered p u c k e r e d puckered the grandmother's face is described as puckered a pucker, puckered means something that is full of lines so uh, you can have puckered lips for example uh, if you bring your lips together and uh, create uh, some uh, wrinkles on your lips then that can be described as puckered for example like this so this is puckered uh, there is another word monotonous now uh, what is monotony monotony means uh, something which becomes so similar something that is uh, uh, not changing unchanging monotonous means it has a single tone it doesn't have many different dimensions it has a single tone a monotonous dial a monotonous uh, dialogue or or something a monotonous picture so it becomes same and therefore it becomes boring so monotonous uh, is something that is unchanging same and boring uh, shroud uh, you will remember that uh, after grandmother passed away her body was uh, covered in a red shroud as per the tradition a shroud is a long cloth which covers a dead body a shroud is also something that can be used to cover something so if you are covering a thing with uh, uh, an enclosure or a cloth or some kind of uh, uh, thing that hides the thing inside then that outer thing can be called as a shroud so we can say uh, shrouded in mystery which means that something is mysterious and it is covered with mystery it is not possible to understand what it is it is shrouded in mystery uh, so it is both, both a figurative and a literal use of the word that is possible uh, another word and probably the last one for this chapter is pallor p a l l l o r pallor now what is pallor pallor is uh, the state of being pale or lifeless uh grandmother's face was filled with peaceful pallor means her face was peaceful and it was also pale because she had passed away so her face was pale so uh this completes our list of difficult words for the chapter the portrait of a lady i hope you found it useful and uh, i hope that you will keep coming back for further chapters that we are uh, going to upload soon thank you